uh, the girl group, AKB48. I saw their DVDs going for like $25 or $30 new, and then I would see a accompanying DVD player being sold for very expensive as well. Not like the $20 ones that you might pick up at Walmart, I'm talking about like the new Panasonic DVD player, so you can see all that new awesome footage in uh, 480p. Are you a Lao winner? Have you always wanted to be a Lao winner? What does it mean to be a Lao winner? Well, if you love the channel and you want to support the channel and look good doing it, consider buying the Lao i86 merch, which comes in multiple varieties, including high quality t shirts, long sleeve t shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers, and even women's varieties now. Show the classic Lao 86 logo and help the channel to grow and show the world that you indeed are a Lao winner. Enough of this vlog stuff, it's not going to work for this video. Japan is less technologically advanced than China. What do I mean by that? Well, that's a very weighted statement. All technology comes from Japan, or at least that's how I grew up thinking. When I was a kid, you know, pretty much everything, every video game console, all the, uh, you know, computer technology chips, all that kind of stuff, was made or produced in Japan. So Japan became synonymous with tech in general. And then the, the Japanese car scene took over. So you had things like Honda and Toyota and all these companies coming out. And people, instead of American cars, were finally buying them as well. And they became lauded as the more reliable, more technologically advanced option for cars in general and tech in general. So to me, Japan has always been synonymous with high technology. However, upon going to Japan, I saw a very contradicting argument that maybe Japan is not technologically advanced. I'll give you an example. I have not seen a flip phone probably since 2008 at least 2008, so we're talking like nine years now. And I'm talking about flip phones that don't have an Android or a smart operating system. I'm talking about a flip phone that you flip up, you run Java, you make phone calls and send text messages, That's basically it. I haven't seen one of those in about nine or 10 years. I saw hundreds of them in Japan. I swear to God, not even older businessmen, but just businessmen in general, were still using flip phones. So I see these people take out these cell phones. On the, on the MTR or whatever, and send a text message through traditional SMS. And I was kind of blown away because here in China, everyone's got a smartphone. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. I've been to you know, farms in the countryside where people barely really have enough to put on the table in terms of meat and to feed their bellies and stuff, all the way up to you know, first tier cities that could rival anywhere in the West. But everyone's got a, a, a smartphone, whether it be you know, a domestically developed one or a high-end iPhone, everyone's got a smartphone. So. I just couldn't believe that I was seeing this like super dated technology. Another thing that really struck me was that in Japan people still use DVDs. Why are they still selling DVDs and CDs? What is up with the DVD players and CD players? Why is this a thing still? So DVDs have been, been dead for years, right? I don't think I've seen a DVD player in my parents' house uh, since the day I left, really. So that 480p really, really kind of traditional bad blurry image that we're used to back then, we upgraded. We got to Blu-ray and then we got to you know 4K video, which is what you're seeing right now. I saw shops in the middle of Tokyo, so we're talking about the most advanced city in Japan and potentially the world, that was using DVDs to market their products or show new videos, music videos and then actually selling that DVD for a very, very ridiculous price. So like I was seeing some DVDs, for example, the, the girl group, AKB48. I saw their DVDs going for like $25 or $30 new, and then I would see a accompanying DVD player being sold for very expensive as well. Not like the $20 ones that you might pick up at Walmart. I'm talking about like the new Panasonic DVD player. So you can see all that new awesome footage in uh, 480p really really blew me away the lack of technology there um, and I also saw lots of CRT monitors so you'd go into you'd go into a shop that maybe was editing photos or a shop that was still uh, selling computers and stuff and you could still you could still buy a CRT monitor that really really blew me away another thing is the lack of electric technology so here in China 
you'll see everyone using electronic motorcycles, e-bikes, uh, electric power taxis. Electric power in vehicles in general is a very, very common thing to see, and that's becoming the norm here to the point where people with not that much money in general will actually own an electric vehicle. So it kind of looks futuristic in some respects. You go to Japan, I, didn't, I don't think I saw one electric vehicle. Uh, I saw some hybrids, I saw some hybrids. A lot of the taxis were converted into hybrids. But that was the newest technology that was kind of you know, commercially available. So all of the uh, scooters and motorcycles that I saw, even the brand new ones, even still running two-stroke fuel, you know, burning that, those emissions and pumping out that blue smoke out the back, were the best versions of that old technology. And that's what I kind of noticed in Japan. And this is, this is where the weighted statement kind of turns positive. It might be behind in a lot of ways in that a lot of the old technology is still available, but the equivalent technology, the new technology, is available as well. So you might judge the fact that someone's got a flip phone or judge the fact that there are DVD players available or judge the fact that people still have two-stroke scooters, but all of that technology is available in its newest form, just for a premium. Japan's weird, isn't it, baby? Probably she understand what they say. <laughs> I don't. I don't. And I notice the difference is the stuff that's made in China, it may be more technologically advanced in that there is more electronic technology. There are more cheap cheap alternatives for LED monitors and things like this, but all of the new technologies I see in China doesn't necessarily match up to the technology I saw in Japan. And the reason that people are using some of these old technologies is because they work pretty damn well. So people keep their stuff for a long time and it works. Like the best new two-stroke scooter that uses this ancient ass two-stroke technology is a lot better than owning a, an electronic vehicle here in China. I've seen the recycling plants here with nickel acid batteries leaking all over the place. and you know, people just abandoning them, them on the side of the road. And what they're doing right now with the bike sharing schemes and people are just trashing them and putting up huge mountains of them basically and vandalizing them left and right. I've also owned lots of TVs made in China. They don't last more than a year, a lot of them. All this amazing high technology made in China, I, I still have yet to be impressed by one of them. So yes, Japan is more behind in a respect in that they still have access to older technology and that's preferable to use for some of its citizens. China is actually ahead in the respect that it gets government funding for all of these, this new tech and the government pushes this initiative. Always wanted to be in the uh, Tokyo railway system underground. Pretty damn cool. And I always forget, like, it's not a communist country, so it's not completely state-run in terms of rail travel. Like in China, you just have, you know, the Chinese government that runs the, the trains. Basically, you got the high-speed rail network and you have the slow train network. But here, there's like company after company after company that does it. and like. We are taking one to go to this really, really nice village uh, near Mount Fuji. And we could have taken, you know, the JR, Japan Railway, the normal government one, the local bus or any of, these, uh, any of these ways. But there's a lot of awesome, competitive, decently priced, like better options. But this new tech might as well be called old tech because a lot of it gets thrown away the next year. The reliability issues, the safety issues, the quality issues, are still not up to snuff. And I have been called out many times in that I say there, there are not a whole lot of Chinese brands out there that I can actually appreciate or respect. Uh, my wife used to work for an electronics company selling TVs. I cannot be impressed with their technology when their panels die so quickly. Um, DJI is the much lauded and famous example of the best technology out there. They merely pigeonholed the, the uh, drone market and basically became the only guy in the block to be able to do so. so you're kind of locked into using DJI and thinking that they're absolutely fantastic. I've dealt with DJI and their customer service and their headquarters. It is nothing to write home about, I promise you. So China has a long way to go, and just because they adopt new technology without any kind of bullshit, rigmarole, or bureaucracy in the way, doesn't mean that they're necessarily the forefront of making new technology work. If you like this video, please go downstairs and give me a like. And if you want to see more, go to my patreon.com slash 6 where you can vote on video ideas and tell me what you think. And I also give advice and talk directly with you guys. If you enjoyed the video as well, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel so you can see a little bit more. I want to say thank you so much, Love Winners, and I will catch you on the next one.